thank you readers. Thank you, Donna, for a wonderful gospel story. It's uh, an honor again to stand with you today uh, up here on the chancel steps and and uh, here uh, with our with our sign, with our sign pointing in the different directions. Love, spirit, mercy, faith, forgive, home. And our theme for this Lenten season, follow the signs. Saints, following the signs isn't always easy. In fact, oftentimes it's extremely difficult extremely difficult. This journey that we're asking you to take this Lenten season can be strange, powerful, hard, extremely difficult, challenging. It's not a journey outside. We're asking you to follow the signs inside, inside to those scary places that only you know that only you know and our Creator knows. And to t take those, to take those steps, to take those small, little, crawling motions back into the womb, back into your womb, takes great courage. And that's what I'd like to speak to you a little bit about today: it's courage. The courage that drives us to look for the signs. The courage that drives us to follow them when we see them. This morning's message is entitled, Hank Sauer. Hank Sauer. Most of you don't know who Hank Sauer is. In fact, I'd be surprised if any of you knew. Anybody know who Hank Sauer is? I didn't think so. Yeah. Hank Sauer was the American League batting championship, batting champion in uh, 1958 and 1959, back when most of you uh, were still uh, perhaps a single-celled organism uh, waiting to be born. Uh, but Hank Sauer was an amazing hitter, an amazing hitter. And uh, the reason I know Hank Sauer is because uh, his name was on a baseball bat that I that I had, and it was the only baseball bat I had. And it's an interesting story how I acquired this bat. And so, in the town uh, uh, where I grew up, we had a small—I wouldn't even call them semi-pro uh, baseball team. They were a bunch of guys that uh, got together and uh, and played baseball in. Uh, a league with uh, surrounding towns in the area, and it got, became known as the Twilight League, the Twilight League. And the players would get a dollar a game, a dollar a game, and uh, for them that was big money because it supplemented uh, all of the, the work that they had done during the week. And so every Friday night they would show up in the summer and play, uh, play their games in the Twilight League. And so for us kids, we got to we got to love and see some real baseball. And uh, our job was to go and collect the fly ball or the foul balls. Every foul ball that got hit, uh, uh, we would run it down, track it down, and quickly as possible bring the ball back to the umpire. Because there was only five balls. <laughs> there was only five balls. And so we had to be fast, we had to be quick. We collected them and we came back. And so our, our uh, pay, uh, our reward for doing this, doing this work, this ministry of foul ball collecting, um, was a bat. But the bats were always broken. They were broken bats because, you know, sometimes if you're a baseball player, when you, when you hit a ball not squarely, the bat will break. Sometimes it will even shatter. And the bat that I was rewarded was in two pieces, two pieces. It was the Hank Sauer, the Hank Sauer. So I didn't feel much like the batting champion uh, when I got this broken bat, but I took it home and my father looked at it with great pride and he said, 
this will be okay. So he put the two pieces of the back together and he put a screw, a screw in the back that kind of hung up a little bit. So if you swung wrong, you, you, uh, you hurt your hand. And then he took electric tape and he wrapped it and he wrapped it and he wrapped it and he wrapped it. And pretty soon that bat felt, felt pretty good. It felt, it felt like, like it would work again. It felt like it would work again. Uh, later, I had an opportunity to put that bat into service, but in, not in the, the usual way that one would think. Many of us have encountered trials and tribulations, you know, in our growing up. Uh, many of us have encountered bullies or those who would want to impart their way uh, on you, even though you knew that uh, you should be doing something different. And uh, I was no different. Uh, in, in my growing up, I uh, encountered a, a group of bullies in my school that uh, traveled in packs. Uh, there was there was one one uh, a young man uh, whose name was Lauren. Lauren, you know who you are, and uh, <laughs> and, and I hope uh, I hope you're feeling better this morning. Uh, but there was Lauren, and, but Lauren always had his three associates. And so whenever you encountered Lauren, you encountered the other three musketeers. And so on this particular day, it seemed like uh, Lauren was intent on making my life difficult. And I, I kind of pushed through and, and, uh, and Lauren really didn't like that. He didn't like being challenged. He didn't like being said no to. And so he said, I'm going to meet you up at the baseball field after school, and you better be there. Well, I was terrified. I was terrified. I mean, not only was I terrified of Lauren, but I was terrified of, of his three associates as well. So I thought, what am I going to do? And I came home, and, and my father said, son, what's wrong? I can see you're really upset. He said, I said, pops, I said, I, I, I'm in trouble. I said, um... Uh, you know Lauren, Lauren the bully. He said, "Yes, I know Lauren the bully." He said, "He wants to meet me at the baseball field after school." And my father said, "Well, what are you going to do?" I said, "Well, uh, I'm going to stay here, of course." <laughs> <laughs> smart, smart boy. But then he said, "No, son." He said, "I want you to think this over just a little bit more. I think it's important that." Perhaps when things stand in your way, um, like Lauren, uh, yes, you can, you can stay here, you can be safe, or you can do something different. You can go and, and face Lauren head on and see what happens. He said, I'm really not too excited about that, but Pops, I understand. And uh, as I was leaving the door, he, he said, uh, here, son, take this with you. And he handed me Hank Sauer. <laughs> Hank Sauer. Hank Sauer with the screw that held it together. Hank Sauer with the electrical tape. Hank Sauer, my courage, bruised and broken in pieces, repaired lovingly by a father who knew that someday I would need it. I would need it. And so I'm happy to say that I went forward and we had a happy ending. Uh, Lauren and I and his three associates engaged each other. We stared each other down like gunfighters on the on tombstone. And I with my Hank with my Hank Sauer and he with his associates, we gazed at each other. And I'm happy to report absolutely nothing happened. <laughs> Absolutely nothing happened. Lauren retired to his lair, and I retired to my home, and life was good, and a message was learned. And the message, saints, is that message of courage. That message of courage is the fuel that propels us down the road. When things get hard, when things get, get, get difficult, 
Yes, our courage can be broken. Our courage can be shattered. Our courage can be in pieces and need to be screwed and taped together. But our Father is always there to do it. To do it. To make sure we have the tools that we need so that the journey of peace and faith and life, the journey to love and spirit and mercy and faith and the journey home can continue in a good way. Continue in a good way. And we see that courage both in our Old Testament reading today and in our New Testament reading today. In the New Testament, we have Jesus preaching in the temple and the people come to him and say, hey, you all better look out because Herod is, is breathing down your neck. Herod is coming after you, bud, and you better be ready. And what does Jesus say? I'm here. I'm here. Let that fox know where I am. I'm going to continue to, to uh, cast out demons and to heal and to pray and to do my thing. And if he wants to come with Lauren and his associates, by all means, let's, let's bring him forward. But nothing happened. Nothing happened. Who gave Jesus the power to do that? Who gave Jesus the power to grab his Hank Sauer and say to all the powers of Rome and, and Jerusalem, hey, I'm here. What's going to happen? I believe God did that. God taped up Jesus' back. God put the screw in it and put it in his hands. So when it was time, it was time he needed the courage. And you know, goodness, he certainly needed the courage because we know what was going to happen next. I believe Jesus held tightly to Hank Sauer throughout his entire career, and it was the fuel that drove him in his ministry, his vision quest, his ministry to excellence and the creation of the Jesus way. Courage. Courage is all about faith. And I had a wonderful friend, a good friend, a close friend of, of mine this week tell me, and we were talking a little bit about this and the story, and, and they always say, well, what are you going to talk about uh, this week? And, and I share that. I share that with them, and they always have uh, uh, interesting, uh, interesting comments and, and wonderful additions. And this is one. They said to me, you know, Father Joe, this courage is about Never even having the possibility of giving up. Never even having giving up in our lectionary. Never even conceiving of the fact whereby there is a, there is a situation where we can lose our grip on the bat. We can drop the bat into the dirt. And what gives us that courage to, and strength to hold on? It's our faith and our hope that somebody's got us. Somebody's got us on this journey. Who's got us? I believe our creator has us. And Jesus making this beautiful safety net so that we can walk this journey with courage and dignity and honor. They've got us. They've got us. We don't have a choice but to hold on. And as we take this journey inward, inward into the womb, where we find scary things, where we find Lauren and his associates, and even worse, even more hard things that we don't want to face, hard things that are sometimes seem too strong. It's there that we have that beautiful net, that beautiful wrapping of our God and our Jesus, giving us the courage, the will, Hold on to Hank Sauer. Hold on to the bat. Hold on. Swing mightily for the fences. So saints, as we walk this journey today on the second Sunday of Lent, as you take those steps into your womb, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Love and live fearlessly as you walk here as you walk there because we are covered 
Creator has us. Jesus has us. But just remember, always take your bat. <laughs> These words are offered in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our gift in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.